Liza Compass, welcome back to another video and welcome back to vlog number two of this YouTube channel. If you guys are completely new to my channel, hi, hello. My name is Liza Compass and I am a full-time artist, a brand new YouTuber here on YouTube and an aspiring singer, songwriter and overall creative. I do all kinds of stuff. I do art, I do music, I sing, I perform, I write really anything that moves me creatively. I'm not the kind of person that can do the same exact thing every single day. So I'm very lucky to be able to have this creative career for myself and be able to do really whatever I want, but there's a catch to it. A lot of people, when they hear that I'm a full-time artist, they think that I just sit around and paint and draw all day and go to these shows and schmooze people and have this fancy life. <laughs> No, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, I run my own business and I'm the only one here doing it. So yes, making art is a huge part of what I do, but the other aspect is running my website, running my business, making calendars, doing my finances, keeping track of taxes and all those things. Whenever I sell art, I'm the one shipping it out and producing the orders, putting together invoices for people. Yeah, okay, all of that sounds really boring, but I try to keep things really interesting. If you guys have been following me at all on this channel or on social media up to this point, I'm sure you know that art is a huge part of my life. It is the thing that allows me to express myself and really connect with people. I mean, I am a major introvert, which really surprises people because I perform and I love being on stage, but if you actually get me in a room with people, I'm like, <laughs> It's difficult. It's hard for me to even just talk to a camera. This relationship here has been a process. So slight disclaimer, if we're walking around in public at all while I'm vlogging and I'm really awkward and I hide the camera away, I am sorry. I am working on myself. It's a process. Anyway guys, I am so excited to get this week started. We have so much to do, so let's get into it. So today is Sunday and I actually have something kind of fun to do today. We actually get to leave the house. It's a sign of the apocalypse. I have a piece that's on display right now at a gallery in Tampa's Old Hyde Park and we're actually gonna get to go see it today. As I'm filming this, it's the end of July during all of this coronavirus craziness and the reason it's exciting that I actually get to go out and do something is because this gallery has been closed down for a long time. Um, this juried show that I'm a part of actually was supposed to take place in March, I wanna say. Anyway, it's been a really long time. We had to keep delaying the show, but the show is beautiful, so I really wanna show you guys my piece and also take you through the gallery and check out all of the amazing art that's a part of this show and all of the things that were submitted by local area talent here in Tampa Bay. I'm also going to spend some time with my mom today, take her along with me and kinda, you know, show off a little bit, show her what I do. I also have a couple of posts that I'm working on for Patreon that really need to get done today. I have a lot of new art that I'm starting, some new ideas that I want to jot down and work into my week somewhere and get ready to start some new things. I am working on a music video right now, which you're going to see some of that this week. I am so proud of this music video. I mean, I'm still working on it and you guys are going to be able to see a little bit of that process this week. I just really feel like it is so in tune with me, with my message and with the things that I'm going to be producing and sharing with you all on this channel, the things that I write about in my music, the things that I love bringing attention to. And anyway, we'll get into that, but I have some different costume designs and makeup designs that I'm working on for several different looks in this music video. I'll explain more about that as we get into it, but those definitely need to have progress made on them today. I also have some print orders that need to make it to the post office first thing in the morning, so I need to run around and make sure I have everything ready for those. I also try to set aside time every day to work on some form of songwriting. I produce all my own music and that's been a journey too. Um, I'm so excited to share all of this with you guys. I think you're really gonna love it and I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm also very, very excited more than anything else. So anyway, we got a lot to get done. I'm gonna stop talking and get started on the rest of this. I'll see you in a bit. None of my days are exactly the same. 
and honestly this is one of my favorite parts about working for myself. Even so, you'll find me with my breakfast and a cup of tea at my computer almost every single morning, checking emails, checking my website for new orders to be filled, doing daily clerical tasks, and listing out my goals for the day. This morning, I'm finishing up some exclusive content for my patrons on Patreon. My Patreon page is brand new, so at this point I am determined to get into a regular posting schedule to give extra behind-the-scenes content to those who want to support me on that platform. Guys, I will be the first to admit that I am not perfect, and honestly, being your own boss can be really challenging and stressful, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Just knowing that people like my art and appreciate what I'm doing makes me feel like I've found my thing, you know? This is my path, and nothing has ever felt more in alignment with my truest self. Okay, great. So all of the orders that actually came in over the weekend, I had prints on hand for. So I was able to get about half of them packed up and we're going to put that away for right now and head over to the gallery here in a minute. I also got a Patreon post done, which was really important. I also have a second one that I wanna to try to get done today that I will schedule to post in the next couple of days. And without further ado, we are going to go meet up with my mom and take her over to Hyde Park. Let's go. Look who it is. Hi. It's my mom. <laughs> yes, I'm the one responsible for this one. Don't so. be too mad at her. Please. Oh, no, I love her. Are you excited? I think so. We're going on an adventure. Adventure time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. And I'm at her mercy because she's driving yep. me crazy. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've been involved in a few shows at this gallery before, but this one just blows my mind. I mean, I am always grateful and honored to be a part of any art show, especially juried shows like this one, but come on. So many of these pieces are just on another level and so incredibly creative. If you guys have been following my story at all, you know that I gave up on art a few years back when I was about halfway through art school, and I never thought I'd go back to it and be a part of this world again. And of course, when I took that first leap of faith to not only start creating again, but to put my work out into the world, I was absolutely terrified. My art comes from an incredibly personal place, and sometimes putting it on display feels like a violation of privacy. After all, I'm hanging up all of my weaknesses, flaws, and insecurities right alongside the art. But I've learned the best way to send these fears packing is to just put yourself out there. And really, this applies to everyone. Just be you. Be you and put yourself on display for the world to see. Some people may not get it, but others will. And most of all, at the end of the day, you can be proud knowing that you have been truly authentic. I'm so glad my mom and I got to actually get out today and do something fun. Now we're going to go get a bite to eat at Dixie Dharma, which makes my southern vegan heart very happy, and then back home and back to work. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm planning on getting into some serious costume construction for this music video that I'm making. I'm recording my own cover version of Cells Planets, and if you're not familiar or haven't heard of the song before, Cells Planets is a piece of choral music I learned a few years back, but I really love it and have decided to make it my own. I'll get more into my concept and meaning behind it later in the video, but as you can see, I have a lot of costumes to work on. In fact, there's 11 looks total for this music video. I'm performing the cover a cappella in nine different vocal parts, so the entire process has become very complicated, but even more so rewarding. I seriously can't wait to share this with you guys, and it's going to be epic once I can get everything done. Now that I have these rough sketches finally down on paper, I need to finish packing these orders before I turn in for the night. I'm sure I'll revise those designs a few more times, and I'll also be creating full color renderings of them as well, which I'll most likely be posting on Patreon sometime very soon. Now, with those orders all ready to go, I'm going to turn in for the night, so I will catch you guys in the morning.
okay packages are sent. I have a Starbucks because I just feel like I need caffeine this morning. I don't work a job just Monday through Friday. I do something for my business every single day and usually from the time I wake up in the morning to when I go to bed at night. But of course, I don't mind. I love that I'm able to do this for my job. I love that I'm able to work for myself and on my own terms. It's definitely completely possible and if you'd asked me just like a year ago if I thought I would be in the situation I am now, I would probably roll my eyes and be like, oh, okay, sure, that sounds nice. But you know, everything happens for a reason. I am making a conscious effort every day to believe in myself and to value myself and put my dreams first, which honestly up until now is something I've never done in my adult life, but you know, things can always change. So cheers to that. Cheers to art. Cheers to trying new things. And cheers to being super productive this week. That is a good vegan vanilla chai latte. I love it. Okay, so now that I have everything sent and up to date, it's time to get focused on the rest of my day. Something else I try to do every morning is affirmation journaling. It's basically my way of recentering my focus around gratitude and filling my life with positive energy rather than allowing myself to be controlled by stress. It's all a process and I'm working on myself, but little practices like this have been really helping me so much. Today, I am going to focus on hand embellishing as many prints as I possibly can. Up until now, I've mostly been producing prints and hand embellishing them as orders come in. But as you can see, some of these take me a really long time to do. I mean, I almost feel like I'm completely redrawing some of these. It's okay though. I really love using metallics, iridescence, and even glitter accents in a lot of my art. So oftentimes I'll add these elements back in when I do sign a numbered prints for an added special touch by the artist. In most cases, the prints alone without the shimmer and shine just don't do it for me, you know? The only downside is how long they can take to make, but now that traffic to my website is picking up and I have a lot of orders coming in, I want to make sure I have a good stock of these prints done ahead of time so I'm not stressed out about it later. Right now, I'm working on prints from last year's Inktober series, and I had a lot of fun doing these, and going back through them now just really has me excited to do it again this year. If you don't know what Inktober is, it's a daily drawing challenge circulated on social media every October, which encourages artists to create an ink drawing every day based on a daily prompt. Last year, I took it a step further and themed each drawing around both the prompt and music concepts that I've been working on. It's like I've left little clues for you guys to look back on and find over the next year or so as I release new music. These can take so long to do. <laughs> I've literally been embellishing prints all day. I mean, I've been at this for about eight hours at this point. And this is of course why usually I do them as orders come in, but I wanna get a little bit of a head start on some of these because honestly, that puts a lot of pressure on me. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm getting very tired and I'm thinking stuffed peppers with quinoa for dinner tonight. So I will see you guys after I have recharged a bit. Okay, now I'm gonna switch gears a bit and work on something besides Inktober. I have all of my prints made on very thick, high quality cotton paper, which makes it possible for me to go back over them with all kinds of things, including paint. I'm such a dork and I just love how close I can get these to look to the originals. It makes me happy to know I'm providing the amazing people who support me and buy my signed and numbered prints from the website the highest quality product that I possibly can that's both beautiful and can stand the test of time. Please don't judge me too much for that. I'm exhausted and we matched. What else was I supposed to do? Anyway guys, it's after midnight. I'm exhausted. I have prints 
everywhere drying, so I don't think there's anything else I can get out to work on right now. So good night, I guess I will see you tomorrow morning. Good morning. Have I mentioned that I'm terrible at vlogging yet? Okay, I want to be 100% real and honest with you guys because the truth is I haven't been vlogging for the past couple of days and there's a pretty good reason for that. I was going to just breeze over it and pretend like it didn't happen, keep filming several days from now and put it together into this week in a life vlog, but um, I had a really important realization last night and I wanted to share a little bit of it with you guys. After I had been working on prints the other night and I was wrapping up with that, I was exhausted and I started to get ready for bed. I was really tired, I was kind of cranky, and I was just cuddling with my dog trying to feel a little better. And as I'm cuddling with my dog in bed getting ready to go to sleep, I feel a bump on his chest like above his leg on his right side and oh that's not normal honestly I freaked out I started to have a straight up panic attack so of course after that happened everything had to be put on pause and my husband and I took him into the vet the next day we haven't gotten any results back we're probably not going to get results back for at least a week just because they can take a long time. My dog's name is Linus. He's a Cocker Spaniel and it's really stressful because he's not very old at all. We adopted him but we think he's about eight or nine years old. So if you guys wouldn't mind, please keep Linus in your thoughts, your prayers. Send him all the good vibes you can, all the prayers you can, all the positive thoughts because he's such a good dog and I really don't want to lose him. But that's where my mind has really been for the past couple of days. And then the day after that, which was yesterday, I was just beside myself. I didn't really feel like getting out of bed and doing much. I definitely didn't feel like, you know, dressing up a little bit and being in front of a camera and talking to you guys. And I felt terrible about that. And I started beating myself up mentally and really berating myself because, you know, Logically, I realized that there was nothing I could do at the time to help my dog. So really what I should be focusing on is doing my job, running my business, doing my art, doing this vlog, doing the things that I can control. But the fact of the matter was I was stressed out and I was on the verge of a panic attack all day yesterday. Even though I didn't know anything new, my dog was still in the same, you know, kind of condition. And I found myself trying to make a plan of like, okay, I was going to film a week in my life as an artist, so there's seven days in a week, so I need to figure out, you know, what I'm going to do over the next few days. I can start filming tomorrow, and I'm going to act like it's Tuesday, and I'm going to keep going, and things are going to be fine. But the truth is, they're just... They're not fine. <laughs> so guys, the reason I'm telling you all of this is because I always want to be 100% honest. And the truth is, things don't always go as you plan. And you know, I really had to sit myself down and be like, look, you're human. It's okay to be upset about stuff like this. My loved one is going through something really difficult. I mean, we love Linus so much. He's our fur child and we don't want anything to happen to him. So I will try to keep you guys posted the best that I can on his situation and how he's doing. And again, if you want to send prayers, good vibes, all of the positive thoughts that you possibly can, whatever you feel comfortable doing, I would be eternally grateful because he is such a special boy and he deserves everything in the world. Whew. So guys, that's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm at mentally and emotionally, but the truth is I am feeling a bit better about it today and I feel so much better that I could just get it off my chest and be honest with you guys and I don't feel like I have to be deceptive about what I'm going through anymore this week. So I have some prints ready for pickup at Blick Art Materials. So I'm gonna run over there, pick those up and pick up some other art supplies that I need and Potentially some that I don't need. Blick is a very dangerous place. You can get into a lot of trouble in that store. 
and get lots of new ideas, but we'll see. I'm not going to take the camera along with me this time because even though it's sunny out, the forecast says it's going to rain because <laughs> Florida. So with that guys, I need to head out, but I will show you what I got when I get back. Yes, I got more prints. They look beautiful as always, so thank you, Blick. And of course, most of them need embellishing, so I picked up more metallic pens and some other things that I go through like water, like spray varnish and Poscas. I love Poscas. And a couple of canvases I need for an upcoming project that I'm gonna be starting probably next week. Actually, I'm really proud of myself. I didn't go too crazy at the art store, which is a plus for me, that never happens but I did get some good ideas while I was in there. Today, I also need to frame my stained glass watercolor series that I created for Cells Planets because until now, they've just been wrapped up and out of the way waiting for me to have time to work on them. But while I was at Blick, I started wondering if there was anything else I could add to these, just something subtle to make them pop. And that's how I got this crazy idea. And to fill you guys in on how these pieces were originally made, they are not on traditional watercolor paper. I wouldn't recommend doing what I'm about to show you guys on a watercolor painting that you've done on paper just because it would probably smear and could ruin your painting. These pieces were done on aquaboard, which is a hard board made by the company Ampersand, covered with layers of some magical concoction that allows the surface to absorb watercolor, much like paper does, but it's not paper. Painting on aqua board feels very different and comes with its own set of challenges, but it can also allow for some pretty cool effects, which I found beneficial when attempting to recreate stained glass-like textures for these paintings. If you'd like to try aqua board, I say go for it. It's really fun to use for sure, but if you're already a watercolor painter, don't expect your paints to act exactly the way you're used to. Just try it with an open mind and explore it like you would a completely different medium. Anyways, these paintings were already sealed with a spray varnish and then given two coats of liquid varnish a few days ago. Don't ever, ever, ever try to use straight up liquid varnish directly on a watercolor painting unless you've sprayed it first because it will absorb your paint, run everything together, and completely ruin your painting. Sorry if this sounds dramatic and complicated, guys, but the truth is, I really loved creating these, and I'm sure I'll do more pieces in this style in the future. So let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in learning more about my process for creating stained glass-inspired watercolors, and possibly seeing a tutorial in the future. But since each of these is sealed with like four layers of varnish, I think what I'm about to do will be completely safe for my paintings. I'm taking gloss varnish into a syringe and very carefully making little droplet accents throughout the piece. I'm choosing different areas to embellish over each one to highlight and bring attention to the unique features of every piece. I'm trying to give them just a subtle sheen and make them feel more like church windows. Cells Planets is a song that really spoke to my soul from the first time I heard it and all these years later continues to serve as a loving reminder of how both the smallest and biggest aspects of our planet and of our universe are all the same, and that our purpose in life is to love, to be loved, and to let go of worry and pain. It reminds me that while our troubles today might seem overwhelming, we are indeed delightfully minuscule in the scheme of creation. I've developed a visual story for my music video to celebrate the beauty and similarities between the tiniest pieces of our existence to the grandest scale imaginable, which I've chosen to display symbolically as church windows. Without giving too many surprises away, the video is going to revolve around the idea of the inner temple of the mind and the struggle we face with our egos to reach our higher selves. Each of these paintings is named after a line of lyrics in Cells Planets and revolves around a specific color of the light spectrum, each symbolizing one higher level of consciousness after the other. I've poured my heart and soul into the concept and creation of this video, and I've been filming the process every single step of the way. And once the music video premieres, I'm going to take you guys back with me and go through the entire process, step by step. It's probably going to take a few hours for these to dry, so in the meantime, I'm going to start working on a brand new colored pencil drawing. If you guys remember Soul Searching from earlier, this piece is going to be part of that same series. Most of the art I make is directly related to songs I'm writing, both of which are usually inspired by dreams, life experiences, or a combination of both. 
Being born and raised in Florida, I've always had a deep-rooted fascination with mangrove trees. <laughs> Pun intended. They are absolutely incredible. They are strong, resilient. They provide shelter for vital aquatic species and protect the shoreline from erosion. They are a keystone to our local ecosystems, but they are not just native to Florida. Various species of mangrove trees have planted their roots all around the world, hugging the equator of our planet. I envision these trees as the vital protectors of Mother Earth, embodying divine feminine characteristics, which is my intention to illustrate in this drawing. This piece is going to be 24 by 24 inches, which is absolutely huge when you're working in colored pencils. I'm definitely not going to finish this right away, but if you follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting progress shots within the coming weeks, and eventually the finished piece. Knowing how long soul searching took me to finish, I estimate I'll probably be working on this one for about 50 hours total. The things we do for art, right? <laughs> I'm probably just going to chill out with this drawing for the rest of the night, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back. I'm very grateful this morning because I can definitely feel myself starting to feel myself again, to feel happier and more able to be productive and to be creative today. Yesterday was definitely a struggle trying to stop myself from beating myself up too hard because I was still in a really dark place, honestly. But the good news is Linus looks like he's starting to feel a little bit better today. Um, he seems less angry with me for taking him to the vet, so that's a positive. I'm really hoping he's going to be okay. And of course the what ifs are still there and I'm trying to keep myself from spiraling, but for right now, we've done what we can. I'm giving him all the love that I possibly can and praying and hoping for the best. This morning I decided to take a couple of hours to just take it easy this morning. And instead of starting work right away when I got up, I actually did take the time to sit down and meditate. I try to keep in a steady practice of meditation every day. I try to do it twice a day, but I have been having a very hard time keeping up with that as of late. I don't know, I'm the kind of person that if I need to sacrifice part of my day, I always sacrifice the part that is just for me, that can benefit me the most, which in the long run isn't a good idea because if it's beneficial to me and to my health and my mental health, it's ultimately beneficial to all other aspects of my life, including my family, my business, the art I create, all of it. Whenever I'm really stressed, the thing that really helps me the most is reminding myself to breathe and coming back into my heart center and just remembering who I am and remembering why I do what I do and reassuring myself that everything is going to be okay. Sometimes it's good just to quiet everything and sit there in awe to appreciate the complexity of it all. Because it's so complex, but also so simple all at the same time. Sorry if I'm starting to sound a little too esoteric first thing in the morning, but these are the things that I think about and these are the things that really inspire me to create every day. <sighs> It's become such a huge part of who I am, and I love sharing that with you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up so you guys can see this, but I'm wearing my Heart Center shirt today. This is a watercolor that I did called Love Grows. So that's just a little subtle reminder to me today to stay in the right headspace and the right heart space. So with that being said, let's get started on some tasks for today. And by the way, guys, just a quick shameless self-promotion here. All of the shirts, masks, bags, and all the other stuff that you see throughout this video with my art on it can be purchased on Redbubble. They have a fantastic array of quality products that are fun to wear, use, and display around your home. So if you'd like to support me and other independent artists on Redbubble, you'll find my shop linked in the description box below, so check it out. So today, I need to finish some much needed housekeeping on my website. I've been noticing some odds and ends on different product pages that could be more detailed or could look more polished in general, so I've decided to sit down and tackle as much of it today as possible. 
A lot of this is going to involve taking some new product photos, flushing out descriptions, all of that stuff. I also have some pieces I want to put in new frames, which we'll tackle today as well, considering they will also need to be photographed for my website. Speaking of frames, I think it's time we finally get frames on my babies from yesterday. Oh my gosh, look at these, it's a rainbow. Guys, this is literally the first I've laid all of these out together and I'm low key drooling. I mean, just look at this, Ugh, delicious. Any hoozle. These are all metal frames and I didn't want anything too bulky because I wanted to keep them sleek, modern, non-distracting, but let's be honest, this is a straight up rainbow and it's gonna pop, but you know, I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Um, what can I say? They're divas. Yeah, girl. <laughs> oh my gosh, these are gonna look so good. Ah! Okay, let's get done with some of these other frames too, because honestly, I'm about to rearrange my entire wall before the grand reveal. I mean, I am dying. I mean, literally, I'm dead. Anyways, I've been gathering materials to frame three other pieces today, which are all drawings. One thing about working on paper so much of the time is that whenever you want to display your pieces in a show or take them to art festivals, they need to hang and they need to be protected. So really framing becomes a must. Now I do go a little bit extra with my framing. For those of you who don't know, I've worked as a fine art framer professionally, so I know a lot about what really needs to go into framing something to protect it long term. This is both a huge benefit for me because I have the knowledge and skills to frame my own art at home, which can save me a lot of time and overhead costs, but that also means that my conscious won't allow me to frame art that isn't anything less than, you know, the good stuff. I personally use all acid-free materials and UV protected museum glass on everything, which yeah, it's more expensive to produce than throwing it in a frame just off the shelf, but something I learned as someone selling frames and taking care of other people's art for so long is that unless you have some kind of background in this, most people buying art have no idea that keeping art in the wrong materials will destroy it over time. So if anything, I guess I do it this way because I would feel guilty selling someone something framed that I never expected to last and protect the art long term. Granted, they could always reframe something, but you never know, and honestly, most of them won't. That is, until something goes wrong. So I wanted to make sure my art is safe and protected, no matter how it's displayed when someone buys it. This last one is another one of my lady trees, and it's called Roots and Rainbows. And it's getting a new frame because it was just recently on display somewhere that busted the frame up pretty bad, which, while yeah, that sucks, it also gave me an excuse to get something different because Honestly, I wasn't even really happy with the frame that it was in to begin with. I just, I don't know, I felt like it could look better. I felt like I could get something to match the piece a bit better. So in the meantime, I found this beautiful green tinged like light driftwood frame and I fell in love with it. So this is going to be her new home now. Well, time flies when you're having frames. I mean, fun. Fun, I meant fun. Anyway, I'm gonna make something to eat and then we're going to turn yet another room in my house into an art gallery. Now my husband assures me that he's cool with this and he loves having all my art up everywhere, which one, aw, that's really sweet. But two, it's also starting to become like a little bit of a situation. I mean, this isn't even close to like half of it. I have canvases and frames scattered throughout our entire house. And most of my art is on either paper or canvas panels, which isn't even framed. And it's all tucked away in portfolios or the forbidden art closet. I guess there are far worse problems I could have besides being surrounded by pretty art, but seriously, someone please send help. Send help or offer up your walls. I need more walls. Hey guys, good morning, welcome back. I had some really interesting dreams last night, so I just spent the last hour and a half or so sitting with them and writing everything down that I could possibly remember. My dreams are really important to my creative process. In most cases, they are the fuel for some of my best ideas. I don't know, part of me just can't get over the fact that there's so much more to reality than we can see. And honestly, I believe that we all have a higher aspect to ourselves that communicates to us through dreams. So I definitely listen to them, especially now that I am open to all of this stuff. 
So yeah, I have a lot of new inspiration now. So I think I'm gonna change up what we were gonna work on today. Now that I've written it all down and I've meditated on it for a while, I really feel like getting some songwriting started and maybe even a new painting. But first I am hungry. So I'm gonna go take care of that first and I'll be back with you guys in just a little bit. It's days like this that remind me of how blessed I really am to live in my own little cocoon of creativity. I never know when inspiration is going to strike, or when I'll be spontaneously moved to drop everything and start something new. I'm so lucky to finally feel free enough to believe in myself, to trust my intuition, and to follow my heart wherever it leads. Not only am I an artist, a painter, a musician, and a songwriter, I live with synesthesia, which constantly weaves together every avenue of my creative expression. For as long as I can remember, listening to music has caused me to experience color, movement, and other sensations I found nearly impossible to describe to other people. It's like I live in my own little kaleidoscope, which, while beautiful and captivating, I could never share with anyone else. This made me feel sad and isolated when I was younger, so I tried to ignore it and not talk about it. But I realize now that my view of the world is a major part of who I am. I'm meant to share what I see, what I feel, and what I hear, and to help others understand that it's okay to see the world differently. The way we each view reality is beautiful and complicated. It's unique to us, yet also worth being shared. For me, art and music are one and the same. They do more than simply influence each other. They create one another in the process. Every song I write has its own distinct visual story to tell, and I can't wait to start sharing the finished piece. Music, art, and everything in between. With all of you. Thank you guys so much for joining me this week. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave it a like down below and a comment letting me know what you thought of everything. Every time you guys interact with this video, share it, like it, comment on YouTube, it helps this channel grow and lets me know that you want to see more videos like this one. Also, if you guys want to follow along with me, my art, my music, and all the things that I talk about this channel on this crazy creative journey, please don't forget to hit subscribe subscribe down below, ring that notification bell, and join this amazing and growing family. Guys, I love you so much. Stay positive, keep creating, and I will see you in my next video.